as I said, as we just said, so it's presentation is a joint effort between Andrea and me. Um, you'll notice neither of us have used proper photos in our in our talks. It's because Andrea's not. It's because Jody's not here. He always makes us use proper photos. Uh, quick plug for the GS Data Spatial Data Science Group. We have some funded PhD studentships, and we're going to have some research posts coming up soon. If anybody's interested, keep an eye on us. And Geo Solutions, which I thank for bringing me here. We provide uh, support and custom development and core development for GeoServer and other open source projects uh, as well, our main activity. So, quick overview of GeoServer it's a Java web application that allows you to share and edit geospatial data. Um, we publish data from almost any spatial standard uh, using open standards. We're very big on open standards. Um, so WMS, WFS, WFST, WCS, WMTS, TMS, WSC, you know. If you can think of an OGC protocol, then we've probably implemented it, at least at community module level. So, quick update on the team. Uh, Project Steering Committee has grown by one new member. Uh, Peter Smythe um, basically showed up, did some commits, looked promising. So we a press ganged him onto the, onto the steering committee. Um, sort of warning to anybody who turns up with code, we will press gang you onto the committee. <laughs> uh, we have basically 25 regular committers, and we've had several other people committing this year that have appeared and fixed one problem and gone away again, which was fine. We love that too. Yeah, we have this very long tail of contributors that maybe show up once a year to do little things, and that keeps the project open, in my opinion, and it helps uh, people see that they can participate, that there is an open process to get involved. Uh, so we've clarified the way our service providers list works. Uh, so we have now core contributors to companies these that employ maintainers that regularly contribute to fixing security fixes, releases, doing maintenance activities. Um, we have experienced providers who are people that um, have contributed some functionality to the project on behalf of their customers, and we have some additional service providers who provide training and setup and other assistance with GeoServer. So depending on what you would like somebody to do to GeoServer for you, there's a range of different organizations you might want to go and talk to. Um, so at the base of our tree is the community modules. We have a community space that lets people do experiments, add new exciting functionality that they think is exciting and maybe nobody else in the world cares about, but they're hoping that somebody else will feel interested in it after, a bit, after it's been demonstrated. Um, most of our new work starts out as a community module. Um, it's the simplest way of adding the code to the, to the project. It, um, one, if one of the PSC thinks it's a good idea, then we'll give you access to that directory on the GitHub. Um, they have to compile. That's the only thing we really ask for in a, in a community module, that it doesn't actually break the build. Um, we're quite strict about that. Um, and once everybody's happy with it, it's finished, you can propose it to become an extension. Extensions get produced, every, get produced with every release, get stored on the, get a link on the main page for downloads. Community ones, you have to hunt a bit harder to find out where to, to get them. Though, interestingly enough, quite a lot of core, well, what some people rely on in production are our community modules. Um, Indeed. So, incoming community modules this year, uh, FreeMaker to output for the web feature services, um, Graticules for WMSs, feature auto population, uh, JDG headers authentication, uh, Kafka monitor, and a data loader. Raster attribute tables, which was the community module last year, has produced, progressed to being an extension. More than one person, one people set production area is using it. It's got good community support. It's got um, good documentation. We didn't downgrade any extensions last year, and we didn't kick out any community modules last year. Um, it's about time I have a look. Well, yes. So, Andrea every so often goes through and looks at things that haven't been modified for some years, don't look like they're being kept up to date, and he right. kicks them out. And then occasionally people turn up and say, why can't I find the module for such and such? And we go, 
because nobody was looking after it. Wow. Here's your chance to step up and become a community developer. It's not me, me waking up in the morning and saying, ah, oh, this module has to go. We, I compile a list, send to, to the user list and to the developer list. We are about to, to kick out these modules. Are you OK? Nobody answers. And yeah. then six months later, hey, depend on this module. Well, I did ask six months ago. Yeah, pay attention. <laughs> so hint, if you're using GeoServer in production and you rely on things working, you should probably be on the user list, so at least, so you find out when Andrea is about to kick things you rely on out of the build. Right. <laughs> so releases for this year, as in every other year, we have uh, a three-way rolling release program. So we've always got a maintenance release, a stable release, and a development release. And you should be running on one of the green or blue lines in that middle section where it says you are here. If you're still running 2.24x, then you've got till September for an upgrade in path. Otherwise, we're going to stop doing bug fixes on that. We'll stop doing security fixes on it. You will be on your own. You should be running on 2.25x now. Between September and March, you've got six months to think about moving to 2.26 before we stop supporting that. So keep up to date. Just because you're on the stable release now, doesn't mean it's the stable release next month or the month after. And that seems to confuse people sometimes. Yep. Um, we don't do a long-term stable release. We have a rolling release program. You need to upgrade regularly. It's not a difficult thing to do. Right. The development pace of a GeoServer is still high enough that it's kind of difficult to keep up on LTS. It's just we, 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 we get so many changes in. We're already running into problems backporting into maintenance sometimes. Yeah. So if you're using an older version, you really, really, really need to go home and upgrade now because we just did a bunch of security fixes and we told everybody what those security fixes were yesterday. Yes. Um, so everybody in the world, theoretically, and you can guess the bad guys are probably reading our, our user list to discuss, discover this, knows what those bugs are, what those security, major security problems are. You should be upgrading. So if you're well, not running on 20, or 25 and 23 because we were generous. <laughs> um, please upgrade. Okay. Um, it's also, if you start asking questions about version 2.18, the first thing we're going to say is upgrade to stable release that we're supporting, and then we'll start about answering your question. We haven't got time to go back through all the bug fixes for the last three years to see whether that bug you're reporting has been fixed or not. So. We're not going to answer questions about older versions. Unless, of course, you bought a support contract, in which case Andrea will support you forever. <laughs> no, not forever. <laughs> so what's in it for you if you want to upgrade? There's lots. OK, uh, there's a what's new on our blog. For each release tells you what the new stuff are. We're going to go through most of them now. You will see at the bottom of each slide, there's a little yellow bit that tells you who the sponsor was silver box that tells you who the author of it was, and a green bit that tells you which version that, they, that, it, was, that it appeared in. So improvements for configuration and setup. Um, the demo request page has been completely rewritten by Dave Baysby, GeoCat. Uh, that's come in at 25.2. Uh, that's partly as a result of a security problem. Um, there were all sorts of things. Like providing people with a raw JavaScript page, it turned out there were all sorts of things they could do, and it wasn't good. Right. Um, so that's all much more secure now. Um, he's also switched the WPS and WCS request builders. Um, and there's big improvements, so you can see what the request headers and bodies are. Things that you used to have to open the um, developer tools to find out, and it was really annoying. So that's a great step forward for us. Um, so you can see the input and output. It's well worth having a play with if, you're in, if that's something you use regularly. Uh, as I say, he's rebuilt the WCS, WPS request builders, uh, so they work much more smoothly and more securely now. The uh, Geo a Geo OGC new APIs, so-called WFS 3.0, um, that shows how old I am, isn't it? I can remember when it was called that. Um, now appear in the same lists as all the other services and again, thanks to GeoServer for uh, GeoCat for providing us with that. That's currently in 226x. Uh, Drabiel at Camp to Camp, um, as part of his GeoServer Cloud project, improved the data directory loading. 
Uh, it's now much faster, um, so five or 60 times faster, depending on your setup. Um, to be honest, I've never come across anybody who had 100,000 layers in 100 workspaces. I would always suggest they, they break their GS servers right. up at that point. But For the uh, moment, this is a community module, so it's not part of the core yet, but we have a pull request to make it in the new default loader for 226. But all your config will still work in exactly the same way, but it will go much faster now. Yep. So, mapping. Uh, we now have, is that you? Yes. Okay, so the Raster Attributable Support module, uh, it's an extension now, it graduated from community. It allows uh, rasters to have attributes, just like vectors. Well, the idea is that you have one column, one band that has integer numbers, and those integer numbers, they map onto an, uh, tape, the entries of a table. And so you can have multiple attributes and you can make a classifications with them. The raster attribute table can also contain pre-classified and pre-colored classes. So it's easy to, to create consistent styling across uh, various products with multiple types of classification, right? Instead of having just one uh, possible color output. We added support for uh, an extra autocode. It's a vendor autocode. Autocodes are these projections that uh, are, are parametric. You can choose your central meridian, your standard parallel, and so on. And we made one for the geostationary satellite uh, projection because it's becoming uh, quite common in, uh, when, when you have satellite products. We did it for uh, UMETSAT. And uh, yeah, it gives you the point of view of a satellite, geostation of a geostationary satellite in orbit. And you can choose your uh, central meridian and thus make the Earth flip. Uh, the MapML module has been improved quite a bit through a contract with uh, National Resources Canada that uh, me and a colleague of mine have been working on. Um, I'm not going to go into many details because there is a dedicated presentation just for this uh, tomorrow, I think. So have a look at the, um, the schedule. Um, Ian has been working on uh, WMS Graticals. Uh, so this is currently a community module. So we're looking for some people to test it out before it gets promoted to uh, extension, hopefully. Uh, it needs a little bit of code cleanup as well. Um, but there's been an ongoing question about how you could write an SLD or something that would build your Graticule and that changed as you zoomed in and out and always put the numbers on the edge of the thing. Um, and there were some really wild solutions out there that people have tried. Um, we finally built it in as a new, effectively, it's a data store. And you can specify that you want Graticules to go from every 20 degrees to 10 degrees to 5 degrees to 1 degree as people zoom in. And it comes with a transform rendering transformation that gives you label points that go around the edge of the map. Um, and that was sponsored by... Umatosat again. Umatosat, yes. Um, so again, please, people, try it out. See whether you like it. Let me know. We'll look for feedback on that. Thank you. Some news about the data sources and format. Uh, we have been getting some funding to speed up the interaction between GeoServer and digital drivers. So now it's, it's faster to, to load up the, the data. Um, and uh, if you're asking for statistics, uh, it used to compute them on the fly, which was expensive. Now, um, now it, they are returned only if they are actually present. Uh, we were you, used to open the, the data source twice per render. Now it doesn't work any, that doesn't do that anymore, only once. And uh, hopefully we have in the pipe, if the, the customer confirms it, uh, a, a generic GDAL uh, raster uh, store. So right now, when you install the GDAL plugin, you have a, an enumeration of various formats, but uh, maybe GDAL has, has added 15 other formats in the meantime that we don't expose, and we would like to have just a generic driver that can read them all. So you just upgrade GDAL and you get the new formats, and that's it. We have been working on the, the vector mosaicing store. I provided a, um, a presentation about it this morning. The idea is that uh, you might have a, a massive uh, vector data set which is organized in sort of slices, and uh, you don't want to spend all the money needed to, to store everything in a database, because especially if you are on the cloud, that can become pretty expensive. And so the idea is that we just keep a summary table in, in the database and point to external files which are stored in S3 instead to get uh, uh, much better cost effectiveness and uh, w without uh, uh, ruining performance. 
Flagjobuff got a lot faster. It's now the single fastest format for GeoServer. So if you really need to render a lot of uh, geometries altogether, like in this example that I have here with three zoom levels going, going down, I actually have four million polygons to, to make that picture at the top. And Flagjobuff is the single fastest format to, read the, to render them all in a single, um, in, in a single shot. And it's also cloud friendly, so you can store the files in S3 or whatever. In terms of services, uh, you did not see it probably, and that was the point, but we enabled the JTS to fast inter intersection algorithm uh, like six months ago. We didn't have any complaints, so apparently it's, it's working fine. Um, and uh, 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 we did a significant improvement uh, at uh, the storage of uh, tiles uh, for the filter parameters management. Uh, what are filter parameters? You want to create a, a tile cache for all your styles, for all your times, for all your uh, view params or environment variables. Ge Geocache has to create several um, directories to store the different tiles. And the, the, the way we managed the filter parameters was inefficient. Now we made it a lot more scalable and uh, reportedly, it's somewhere in between two times and 12, 12 times faster. At the same time, uh, uh, an external contributor provided a significant speed up to uh, the, the tile seeding algorithm. And as you can see, it's uh, almost twice as fast by making changes all across the board, uh, PNG encoding, uh, GWC locking contention, and better parallelization in GeoServer, which is the one bit which is not yet merged. But we have a pull request out. Uh, we made a critical fix on Azure Blob Store. Uh, something changed in the dependencies on us, and uh, when uh, we were trying to mass delete tiles, it would never end. It would just keep on making API requests. An infinite number of API requests tend to be pretty expensive on the cloud. <laughs> um, and so we fixed it. Uh, the OGC API community module keeps on kicking. Uh, OGC API features is now site compliant for uh, part one and part two. Uh, we have the Stack API, which is also growing. Uh, it's customizable. And um, we are um, racking up a few extensions to, to add on top of it. Uh, we have a new WFS HTML uh, free marker output format um, that allows you to, to render uh, HTML as a WFS output. We have a new WFS auto-populate module, which you can think of as a trigger in the database that uh, adds or modifies data after you committed it, but it works with every sort of data store, not just databases. In terms of distribution management, we rework co completely how the community modules are packaged in, in an effort to, to separate their dependency because there are so many, and sometimes they have incompatible dependencies. So uh, right now, we, uh, we did it to improve the COG uh, plugin so that uh, we have now HTTP, Azure, Google, and S3 plugins which are separate depending on the type of cloud you are targeting, but we reworked all of them in the process. In terms of security vulnerabilities, uh, we have a new disclo disclosure policy uh, process which you, can, you should be following when reporting any uh, vulnerability. Please read it carefully before making any report, don't ever report a security bug on the user list or on the ticket tracker because they are public. And just yesterday, we announced uh, CD 2024-36401, which is an, an unauthenticated remote code execution, uh, which basically allows someone to send a request and make some code execute in GeoServer without your control. That's bad, you should be upgrading as soon as possible. We made uh, updates for 225, 24, and 23, and my company also provided patches for selected versions which our customers are using and they are not in a position to upgrade. In terms of community building, uh, sponsorship, um, we, we invite everyone to sponsor the project. If the, the GeoServer PSC has some money, we can take decisions on where the project go. If we don't, then it's our customers that take the decision for us. So that's kind of important. We are trying to reduce the friction on communication channels, so GeoServer users is going to, going to be migrated to, over to Discourse, so that you have a forum-like experience. 
And in terms of roadmap planning, uh, everyone is free to, to join and, uh, uh, and push for something, especially if you can provide development resources or funding. Those are the two things that get things done. Um, we have one effort underway to, uh, by Jody Garnett to switch the, the docs from a structured text to Markdown, which, well, it's just easier to, to edit. And, uh, um, and we need help to, to test it before and after to see that the translation went well. And we are going to, to migrate GeoServer to Jakarta E, Spring 6, Wicked 10, uh, and uh, Imagen and Java 17 as the base. It's a long effort that currently doesn't have funding. Uh, we are already doing something, but we need help to go across the river. And that will be it. Thanks a lot for your presentation, and it was impressive to see what went on in the last months. So now it's time for questions. So let's see whether there are questions. Okay, so everything was said maybe and Everyone yeah, as you there. heard, you are invited to join the community and uh, to contribute to GeoServer. Yeah, so thanks a lot again.